so I'm using gray sea salt. You can use uh, Himalayan salt if you like. Bay leaves, organic cane sugar. Uh, you can use white sugar if you prefer. I like to use the organic cane sugar. That's my preference, but you can use whichever sugar you like. We're also going to need some light brown sugar. If you don't have light brown sugar, again, you can use the dark brown sugar. Whole peppercorns, red chili flakes, pickling spice. I'm using my blend of pickling spice. You can find pickling spice just about everywhere these days. Mustard seeds, brown or yellow is fine. I'm also using some black sea salt. Check it out. Look at that beautiful color. You can find it like this online or in specialty stores. Black sea salt is basically sea salt that's been combined with activated charcoal. You can find the activated charcoal online as well in specialty stores. It is pure, 100% pure, all natural food grade derived from coconuts and I use it in a variety of recipes. I also use it for all natural homemade products. You're gonna need a vessel big enough to hold the pork along with the brine for the entire process and it has to be deep enough that you can submerge the pork. Make sure you use a food grade vessel that is BPA free preferably. Remember we're gonna be brining the rose for about 48 hours and you want to make sure that you use something that is a food grade quality. These buckets you can find at your local hardware store. You can also order them online. The basic brine is a solution of water, sugar, and salt. However, you can enhance it and improve it by adding other aromatics to your brining liquid. Uh, and that's just gonna basically inject more flavor to your meat. For the brine, I have three quarts of water that I'm bringing to a boil. And when it comes to a boil, add your bay leaves, salt, organic cane sugar, light brown sugar, black peppercorn, pickling spice, mustard seeds, black sea salt, and as an optional ingredient, red chili flakes. And because I want to continue adding more flavor to my brine, I'm going to add some garlic. The object of a brine is to inject flavor into our meat. Everything that you add to this brine is going to imbue flavor into our meat. Basically, uh, seasoning it or flavoring it from the inside out. Brines are typically used when we want to marinate meats for an extended period of time. In this case, I'm going to marinate my pork rolls for anywhere between 24 to 48 hours. Since I have some oregano brujo that I picked up from the garden this morning, I washed some leaves. I'm going to add that to the brine as well. And I like to bruise it so it can begin releasing some of those natural oils and flavors. You can use any type of oregano you like. If you don't have fresh oregano, you can omit it or you can use dry oregano, that's fine too. Since I have it available, I'm also adding some oregano fino from my garden. Again, you can use any kind of oregano you want. Anytime I can use my fresh oreganos, especially my oreganos from Puerto Rico uh, in a recipe, you know I will. The use of fresh herbs is the perfect way to inject flavor to the meat, especially in their natural state. And when you steep them in a hot liquid like this one for an extended period of time, it releases all those natural oils and flavors, which makes them perfect for this type of recipe. I lowered the heat because it was steaming a lot and I wanted you to see the color of the brine, how much it's changed. I wish you could be here to smell this. The aromas are really intense and absolutely amazing. Since the aromas to this brine are so intense, a few minutes ago the kids came downstairs because they thought I was making a different recipe that they absolutely love. And it uses some of the ingredients that I have here in this pot. Another perfect aromatic to add to brines is celery and I'm adding some fresh celery. This is the perfect time to use the celery leaves as well. And finally, I'm going to add some apples. Apples are the perfect complement for pork. Allow it to come back to a boil, reduce the heat to low, and simmer for 10 to 15 minutes. In the meantime, we can prepare the pork. The brine that I made is enough to brine a pork roast up to 10 pounds. And this pork roast weighs a little bit shy of 10 pounds. To prepare the roast, what I'm simply going to do is I'm going to pull back the fat and the skin because later on we're going to add some seasonings to the pork and that's going to add even more flavor to the panin. After brining the pork, I'm going to be seasoning the pork the traditional way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin pulling back some of that fat uh, along with the skin and that's what we call the chicharron. And go around. Pulling back all the skin and the fat. And we're ready for the brine. 
After about 15 minutes, the brine looks like this. Look at that color. It looks absolutely beautiful. Remove it from the heat and allow it to come to room temperature. If you're in a hurry and you need the brine immediately, we can add ice to the brine. I prefer letting it come to room temperature naturally because I like to control the amount of water that I add to the brine. The secret to the perfect brine is allowing the meat to be completely submerged in the brine. I placed a plate with ice over the top just to hold it down. Pork rolls is completely submerged in the brine anywhere between 24 to 48 hours, no more than 48 hours because beyond the 48 hours the meat begins to cure. And that's not really the object of brining this pork. You don't have to worry about turning it every now and then, just simply cover it and place it in the refrigerator for 24 to 48 hours. 48 hours later it's time to remove the pork rolls from the brine, look at that. Let me grab a tray. Okay, my friends, here is the pork roast that has been brining for 48 hours. Let me show you very quickly what it looks like on the inside. Check it out. Look at all those peppercorns and those herbs. You can take this pork roast as it is right now, stick it in the oven and roast it. And what you'll have is a perfectly seasoned, tender pork roast. Why stop there? Let's take this roast to another level. In addition to the brine, I'm making a rub or a condiment mixture for the pork and we're gonna need cilantro and culantro paste, garlic paste, fresh garlic clove slice, sour orange, sofrito criollo, extra virgin olive oil, sazon with culantro and achote, apple cider vinegar, adobo without pepper, dry oregano, and black peppercorns. Start by crushing your dried oregano. Add the black peppercorn. When the pepper is finely ground, add your adobo. Sazon with culantro and achote. The garlic paste, cilantro and culantro paste, and the sofrito. And mix it to form a paste. I always mix the dry ingredients first, especially when I'm using dry oregano and the fresh peppercorn to make sure we break it up finely and gradually adding the rest of the ingredients to it. it smells amazing already. To finish this up, I'm going to grab a bigger bowl. I'm adding the apple cider vinegar, sour orange. I use sour orange a lot in my recipe, mainly to substitute an excess amount of vinegar, although I make my homemade vinegars. Um, I like to use the combination of both the vinegar and the sour orange. I love the flavor that the sour orange adds to meats and mojitos. It does add a different level of flavor. If you can't find the sour orange, you can definitely substitute it with the vinegar. And finally, we can add the extra virgin olive oil. And to take the roast to another level, we're going to pull back the skin. I'm going to cut some holes. I like to do that on a 45 degree angle and cut right through it and stick some garlic cloves in it. Now for this you can put as much garlic as you want until you go all the way around. We finish with the adobo. Apply a generous amount of the adobo throughout the whole pending, making sure we get every corner of the roast. Cover and place it in the refrigerator 24 to 48 hours. The 
roast has been marinating for 48 hours and it's ready for the oven. Let me show you what the pork looks like on the inside underneath the skin. Look at that. Look how beautiful. Smells amazing. That is one sexy looking pork roast. Let's introduce the probe for the digital thermometer into the meat. And I'm placing it on a 45 degree angle. Being careful not to touch the bottom of the tray so we can get an accurate reading. Oven. I'm placing the pork at a preheated oven at 350 degrees until the pork reaches a minimum internal temperature between 145 and 160 degrees. Okay, let's check it out, see how our pork roast is looking. It's still not finished. We still have to crisp up that chicharron, that famous chicharron on the top, but look at that. Oh my goodness, that is one sexy looking pork. To finish it, we're gonna place the pork rolls in a preheated oven at 450 degrees until the pork rind or the chicharron is perfectly browned and crunchy. After I remove the chicharro, I allow the pork roast to rest for half an hour. Let's go ahead and slice into it so you can see just how moist and tender it is. Look at that. Slices like butter. Look at that. It is juicy and tender. And you can see the garlic cloves. Look at that. Absolutely lovely. Let me show you. It is pull apart tender. Look at that. Beautiful. And that, my friends, is the perfect pork roast. And finally, there you have it, my version of brined pork roast. And I'm serving my brined pork roast with some arroz con gandules and yuca en escabeche. I can't wait any longer, and it's finally time to taste this delicious brined pork roast. Let's go ahead and try it. Check it out. It smells great. Mmm. Since I brined the pork before roasting it, the pork practically melts in your mouth. It is juicy, tender, and very flavorful. You really have to try it. Friends, if you like this recipe, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, and activate the notification bell to be notified when I upload more delicious video recipes like this one. And until next time, I'm Evita, cooking at the rhythm of my heart. Buen provecho, y hasta la próxima. Mm. No, you really have to try it.